welcome to the small video on the very basics of vibration uh, mechanical vibration is considered to be one of the toughest subject and it is considered to be one of the toughest subject because of there are certain prerequisites that we should meet before we dive deep into the topic of mechanical vibration they include linear differential equation so if you can solve some differential equations of this kind then okay it's it's pretty okay so it's good that we go back and refer to refer and learn how to solve these sort of equations then comes equations of motion this probably you should have learned from the your engineering mechanics courses what are the equations of motion for pure rotation what are the equations of motion for general plane motion basically they are newton second laws but we should be knowing how to apply these equations uh, when situation demands it then go coming down we should be also having a clear cut idea regarding what is stiffness so coming back to this example so here is a small one dimensional road so i'm applying a force p on this particular road so this particular point will have a deflection say delta it will be having a deflection of p l divided by ae and not going back to the basics and deriving them deriving these equations from the very basics because you know p by a is the stress delta by l is the strain and e is the young's modulus so i simply used hooke's law to arrive at this particular equation this can be written as k times p where p is the force where k is the stiffness of this one dimensional road so the purpose of this particular demonstration is that all deformable objects have some sort of stiffness built into their system so whatever things even this pen has got a particular stiffness as i am pulling it up like this and i'm holding it here so this has got a particular stiffness then i hope that is clear so all deformable bodies have got some stiffness now coming to the concept of degree of freedom so here you can see there are two masses so degree of freedom means they are the number of independent coordinates that we need to specify to completely define the configuration of a system so here you can see if you specify only x1 this particular mass x m2 can have any value for of x2 so it is mandatory that you specify particular values for x1 as well as x2 so that the system is totally defined now coming to this sort of a pendulum a simple pendulum if we know the length of the pendulum we just need one single parameter to completely define the configuration of the system say theta but coming here there are two there are two bobs so you need theta 1 as well as theta 2 to completely define the configuration of the system i hope that is clear as well now the next question what causes vibration actually vibration is caused by dynamic loads dynamic loads means they change either their magnitude or their direction with respect to time so simple examples a rotating and unbalance in a ic engine will cause vibrations you might have felt it whenever you are traveling on bus or car another example rough roads roads with a lot of gutters and all those stuff when if you are riding on a bike you must have felt it so these are the two examples so that causes vibration dynamic loads are not just sufficient to cause vibration consider this example okay if i apply let's say i'm sh uh, i'm shooting a bullet onto this particular mass and this particular mass as well in which case we will see vibration the system will vibrate in this particular case in this particular case there won't be any vibration if i shoot a bullet in this direction the mass will move certain amount of distance and it will occupy at a it will have a displacement let's say x but in this case what is going to happen is 
it will oscillate to and fro or it will vibrate to and fro that means we can see vibration only in system which has some sort of stiffness built into it so we in industry as well as in uh, academics we model things we calculate the vibration properties by modeling so here is a simple example so this is a this is I'm pretty poor at my drawings so this is a basic automobile so I modeled it like this so this will be the this will be the mass of the passengers as well as mass of the car including everything and these four springs will be um, your four wheels I haven't included any damp dampers into it you can include damping as well so vibration models are basically utilized to convert physical life object physic real life objects into models so now you can do an analysis so that this is it's a real life object and this is the corresponding model now comes the analysis and all those things from a gate perspective I guess uh, almost everything is covered in this slide so we will be talking only about single degree of freedom vibration single degree of freedom vibration means there is only one mass in the system that means you need only one particular coordinate let this be that so let's say X you need only one coordinate to specify the complete configuration of the system now what is the major difference between free and forced vibration that is pretty simple in this case you can see there is a particular force acting on the body let's say there's a let's say this is which is varying with respect to time okay so it is acting continuously again I am emphasizing the word it is acting continuously on the system it is not just like it is acting for five seconds then it is zero it is acting for some time it is acting continuously now coming to free vibration Free vibration means there won't be any continuous external force acting on the system but there will be initial disturbances so as I have shown here so let's say this is my x coordinate this is the origin of my coordinate system and x is the coordinate x at time 0 is 2 mm so I am slightly pulling it to the right and then releasing it so there is an initial disturbance but after the particular after the initial disturbance there is no external force acting on the system so that is free vibration then forced vibration as well as free vibration is classified whether there are whether there is any sort of damping in the system so basically uh, to drive home the concept of damping it is an energy dissipating process so we all know let's say I hold we we all have scale uh, scales right rulers we call so just hold your ruler like this and we apply some amount of force after some time after the initial excitation it will vibrate like this and this after some time it will come to rest that means the energy whatever we have supplied during the initial excitation has been dissipated that's why it is coming to rest so there is air friction so that's why some energy is being dissipated against the air friction so those kind of things are captured with the help of dampers so there is this famous equation f is equal to c into x dot we all know this is the force due to the this is the force that will be acting against the motion due to the damper similarly there will be this is due to the damper let me write it like this and this will be due to the spring spring very simple it will be k into x force is a vector so you have to specify the direction this will be acting against the positive direction of x right because it will be resisting the motion similarly spring force as well it will be acting against the positive x-axis okay then we will look into two case studies so that's it uh, we